This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. If you're a seeker, don't miss the inspiring book, Shamanic Awakening, Between the Dark and the Daylight. This remarkable work chronicles shamanic counselor and indigenously trained dream decoder Sander Cochran's 35 years of experience with diverse wisdom keepers throughout the Americas. Sandy's initiations across the British Isles, Turkey, Greece, and Egypt, combined with her knowledge of symbology, psychology, and myth, influence her dream blog and workshops. Sandy offers private readings, sacred international journeys, a meditative CD, and her book, Shamanic Awakening, to encourage you as you navigate your earth walk and create a deeper connection to yourself. Find this and more at her website, starwalkervisions.com. Welcome to Know the Name, Know the Genius in You, where in a single moment you can recognize your brilliance and change your life. This is a transformational hour that covers an array of topics that demonstrate how individuals use their native talents, as shown in their name, to look at the ordinary in extraordinary ways. Albert Einstein once said that everybody's a genius. Why would one of the smartest people on the planet declare that everyone's a genius unless he knew that to be true? I'm Sharon Lynn Wyeth, and in each weekly show, you'll hear fascinating ways other people discovered the genius in them and what they were able to accomplish. At the end of each of our shows, you'll hear clues on how you can recognize your own innate genius. All over the world, people have many, many diverse interests. And in that vein, we ask how highly successful people have managed to achieve their genius mindset by utilizing the gifts that are seen in their name, utilizing namology science. Our expert tonight is Linda Sherman, who has developed her genius in the area of astrology. Linda Sherman has had a private practice in astrology for almost 45 years. She serves an international clientele that includes corporations and individuals. She's written two books, What Next? A Survival Guide to the 21st Century, published in 2007, containing targeted predictions that have just recently unfolded, such as the housing crash of 2007, the stock market crash of 2008, followed by a lengthy recession, the rise in gold prices, the BP environmental disaster in 2010, and the earthquake and tsunami that hit Japan in 2011. Her second book, published in 2012, is Fast Forward, Surviving the Race to the Future, in which she discusses a great economical depression, climate change, challenges to the powerful elite, and historical cycles in humanity's history. Linda's goal is to educate everyone on these controversial topics to the extent that one can prepare themselves mentally, physically, and every other way possible for what she sees is coming next. Linda's name indicates that she's highly inclusive nature. Everybody to her is family, and she includes everybody and wants everybody to get the benefit of her knowledge along with the benefit of what life has to offer. Her name also indicates that she's got a fabulous memory, especially in the areas of her interest. And of course, who cares about the other areas because they're not important. She also has in her name a likability. So everybody would like her because she's made herself likable, but she's not about to change who she she is and able to get liked. The other best thing in her name for what she's doing now is it says that she's very sure of herself And that has come from years of practice of learning and gathering information coupled with research to be able to be as exacting as she is in her science. Welcome to Know the Name, Know the Genius in You, Linda. Well, thank you, Sharon. That's a delightful uh, interpretation, optimistic interpretation. Uh, But I think it's true that I do feel that everybody is family. That's a beautiful way of of putting it, I feel a part 
of the human race that we're all connected to each other. And even further than that, we're connected to the cosmos, we're connected to the galaxy, to the universe in ways that we can really not even fathom at this point, we can only observe. You know, I would like to have us start with saying, what is astrology, just for any of my listeners who are not familiar with that. And then I'd like to get right in with why some people are rejoicing and others are in an absolute state of panic over our newly elected President Trump and what you see there. Okay. Well, what astrology is, is a study of astronomical placements and events, uh, particularly the planetary uh, placements in our solar system, the position of the sun and the planets uh, revolving around it. The study of this kind of astronomy in relationship to cycles and climates and themes in people's lives individually and in human history as a whole. So what this is is a study and a practice, and it's an ongoing thing in the astrological community. Uh, So uh, there's a subject called mundane astrology, which I practice, which is far from what we normally think of as mundane. It looks at the fates of nations uh, and economies, and businesses and governments and and big big things and the directions we will look at a planetary placement that goes back in history for instance take pluto right now is in the sign of capricorn and it was in capricorn in in the mid 1500s when the renaissance was flowering and the and martin luther nailed his 99 theses on the wall and started the Protestant Reformation, which is one of the most profound revolutions in human history. The more recent Pluto uh, in Capricorn for this was in uh, transiting at the time that the colonists here uh, uh, in America were fomenting a revolution, and in just a couple of years, Pluto will return to the position of Pluto at the American Revolution, which is why I have predicted in my books and in my newsletter that we are starting to experience the second American Revolution, and, and which would bring me to your next uh, question about this time. The, the 2016 election was, was just designed to be filled with massive, massive conflict due to the revolutionary situation that we are in now. And that situation is that there is a division between the haves and the have-nots. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. How would you like to be able to read other people's minds? Well, the next best thing is here. When you know how to read a person's name, you know how the person thinks, feels, and behaves. Each letter in our name holds a key to unlock our true essence. Our name contains both our gifts and challenges in this lifetime. Nemology Science discovers personality secrets hidden in the placement of the letters of our names, including the first and last impression people remember about us. Sharon shows us how to interpret the arrangement of letters as outlined in her book, Know the Name, Know the Person. Sharon Lynn Wyeth created Nemology Science after 18 years of research and testing her theories and has supported thousands of people around the world in understanding themselves and others better. You'll enjoy Sharon's unique teachings as she shares her system to learn the gifts behind your given birth name. Even if you don't like your birth name, there are jewels in this book. If you're thinking of changing your name, ready to name your child, or wanting to get along better with others, this is the book for you. 
If you'd like to improve your relationships and change your life for the better, get the book today, Know the Name, Know the Person, or visit www.knowthename.com. That's www.knowthename.com. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere, Florida. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine such as hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining rooms can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you visit, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic downtown Felsmere. Or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, Old Florida cuisine at its best. Stay tuned. Know the name. And welcome back to Know the Name, Know the Genius in You. I'm Sharon Lynn Wyeth, and you're listening to this wonderful show where our guest is Linda Sherman. And before the break, she was talking about Trump and what this whole last election was all about and how people are so divided on this particular election. Please continue, Linda. Well, I was just saying the country is very polarized and divided at this historic time. Because the American dream has always been you come over here, you work hard, you educate yourself, and you can make a really good life for yourself. And over the past, I'd say, approximately 30, 35 years, with the outsourcing of jobs and and corporations and manufacturing and this whole globalization project has has, uh, left so many people out. Uh, and this is not the only issue, but it's one of the, the major, major issues is that dream of being able uh, to make it in America. Also, the, the decent jobs and the kinds of businesses that su- succeed require what you call Sharon genius. <laughs> At the top, <laughs> you need about four PhDs and and, and uh, very, be very entrepreneurial in nature in order to uh, because things have become so highly complex and advanced technologically that it's very difficult uh, uh, to uh, – and, and companies also – that the deregulation of Wall Street has created a situation where there is more money in derivatives, which are bets that, that investment banks and companies and hedge funds make. <clears throat> they buy bets at a stock – or a currency, uh, or, or a commodity will go up or down. They don't buy the stock or the commodity or the currency. They buy a bet. Uh, one is called a call. I will put money out there that says this is going to go up, or a put, which is a bet that that's going to go down. And people are completely unaware. I mean, the, the, the crashes that we have suffered recently, particularly in 08, were directly related uh, to derivatives and the financializing of bad subprime mortgages and spread all over the world, uh, this kind of deregulation of Wall Street has created a gigantic casino in in the world, and we're about to get hit again. <laughs> we didn't really, either under President Bush or President Obama, these abuses were not really stopped. The tax payer bailed the disastrous disaster out and the the origin of so many of these things has never really been instead dodd frank put a lot of aggravating regulations out there on smaller banks and uh which just created a whole bunch of aggravations and frustrations and really did not stop the global casino the people in it are making billions of dollars currently the number of derivatives that are being traded is somewhere around $800 trillion globally, which would break every bank in existence if, they, if these things went the wrong way simultaneously. <clears throat> so you so have you the derivatives. Do you see the dollar crash? 
Pardon? Do you see our dollar crashing and our economics going down? No. No, the dollar has grown stronger recently for one major reason, and that is that the other, so many other countries, their dollars are weakening. Their currency is weakening. And I see coming up in April a major currency crisis uh, at the beginning of the breakup of the European Union <clears throat> and the beginning of a series of economic and financial crises that are going to hit this year, culminating at the end of the year in the last one, which will take us into uh, a recession. Now, there's all of this deregulation and abuse on Wall Street, and then there are all these people, these hardworking, blue-collar uh, people out in the Midwest who never got their jobs back, <clears throat> who believe <clears throat> that Trump is going to help them. Now, my take on this 2016 election was that whoever the, the rebel was, whoever the one that represented revolution and change was going to win the election. If the Democrats had nominated Bernie Sanders, if they hadn't sabotaged his campaign, he probably would have won. He would have been but because they held Hillary, who was the embodiment of the establishment, and it was under Bill Clinton that Wall Street was deregulated and the NAFTA treaty was signed. So uh, everybody was fed up with the past 25, 30 years of what had been going on that made billionaires richer and the top tier richer and has pretty much gutted the middle class. Uh, and nobody has been coming up with anything. Also, our education system as a whole has fallen. We are just terrible on the list of math and science compared to other nations in the world. We're down like the 47th. Or, uh, we, our, our infrastructure here in this country, including education, including water and, and everything else, has decayed and declined because the money isn't going there. The money isn't going to help people at large. And the factories that used to be there have closed. And a lot of these people who lost those jobs wound up getting maybe a part-time job at a, a very low wage. Uh, so these problems have built in people. They're genuine. And they have built in people's psyches. And, and I think that the Democrats snatched defeat from the jaws of victory by nominating Hillary, who represented the past. And so Donald Trump, who's a maverick from left field in every way, but who really has had no experience with governing whatsoever, is now going to be our next president. This is a revolutionary time. I do not think it's going to be easy for him. Uh, he's already running into massive conflicts of interest with all of his uh, 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 interests all over the place. And he campaigned against he, he accused uh, Hillary being in bed with Goldman Sachs, and he's appointed the former CEO of Goldman Sachs as head of the Department of the Treasury and, and another one which will be in his cabinet. So he's been appointing the oligarchs and the billionaires to these posts. And yet um, some of them are saying they don't agree with Donald Trump about everything. So what we have is what this, the chart I have erected for the inauguration shows is massive confusion. <laughs> the, I think he will get some things done. I think he may be able to alter some of these treaties. I think he may be able to bring some jobs back into the country. Or, or let's say he may be able to bring manu some manufacturing companies from Mexico or China back here. The problem is most of these companies is that when they return to the United States, they're going to automate, which means that a lot of the jobs that would have come back are going to be replaced by robots and computers. And Trump isn't even addressing this issue. So I think he's got a very tough time ahead of him. I think that some things that he had nothing to do with, like the coming uh, economic crises uh, that lie ahead this year, the crashes and burnings, and, that he really had nothing to do with, but it's going to be uh, under his watch in his presidency. And well, I you know, you speak... 
Go ahead. You speak of an ellipse on August 21st as being a very important date for him. Uh, yes. Why is that? And there is a massive, uh, there is a full solar eclipse that runs right across the United States, actually mostly in the northwestern United States. Uh, and it is right on Donald Trump's ascendant. And Mars is ascendant determined by the time of his birth. has to do with the outer persona, the physical self, the, the presentation that a person makes. Uh, and Mars has to do with war and conflict and dissent. And that eclipse uh, hits him. So it... Uh, uh, it really uh, is going that this is not going to be easy. Uh, with the last time that eclipse occurred here in the United States was when a giant hedge fund, global capital management, failed and people lost hundreds of billions of dollars. And that was in the Clinton 1998. And uh, the, this is the first time in history the taxpayer bailed out a hedge fund. So there's going to be some big economic crises that he's going to have to face and it's going to affect him very very personally so you think that once he gets in and he sees exactly where our government is and where our country is that he might resent or regret that he ran for president privately uh, i don't think donald trump is the type of personality that admits he was ever wrong <laughs> that isn't that doesn't not in his dna i don't know what you see in his name Sharon, you would probably discern a lot from that, uh, but but uh, I I don't think. But the the point of all of this is that some of this is fake. It is whoever got elected president during this time might say to himself or has said to, if, if it had been Hillary, she'd say, "What was I thinking?" Because <laughs> because a lot of things that, as I said, that Donald Trump didn't have anything to do with putting in place or creating are going to come and other things that he has said that that are going to be difficult for him and then hopefully already there are some companies that are announcing that they're bringing uh, jobs back into the United States and that uh, inauguration chart does show some success in that well and that seems like a very positive thing only if it will last I know in your second book um, fast forward, surviving the race to the future. You talk about the challenges to the elite. Could you give us like a one minute quick synopsis of those challenges? Well, what that is based on is a lot of things, but the main aspect was Pluto and Capricorn squared to Uranus and Aries that began in 2011 and lasted through uh, 2016 and is still within orb. Uh, now, this is has to do, the, Capricorn is the sign of elitism, of entrenched wealth and power, concentrated and entrenched. Uranus, uh, which is in Aries right now, is, is the sign of the common person out there, the every man, every woman. Uh, uh, and Aries is a very high energy, energetic, youthful, high energy, and sometimes warlike sign. So when they clash with one another, you have a populace that's clashing with the ruling elites. And uh, and I think for the most part, the ruling elites kind of deserve the, the clash. The problem is they're not really suffering from all of this. But, but uh, right, it, it, uh, stay tuned to Know the Name, Know the Genius in You. This show is dedicated to finding out about our future probabilistic futures of what could happen in the United States using astrology. And after the break, we'll find out some of the different ways that Linda Sherman has assisted people with her astrology. Her website, if you want to check it out during the break, is soothsayer.com. And you'll notice that every month she puts out a newsletter on this website that is very informative and lets you know the research that she's gone in and what's happened with different times that the same configurations have taken place you know, in our history. And you'll see that she does quite a bit of research and really brings to life what the probabilities are of what things could happen. So when we come back from the break, we'll see how this particular revolutionary war may not be done with soldiers, but may happen in a quite different way. So stay tuned to Know the Name, Know the Genius in You.
This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. While science pursues fact, magic accesses the quantum level, bridging random facts to form truth. As long as science and magic remain separate and polarized, the truth cannot be known. I'm Gwilda Wiecka. Join me on the Science of Magic radio program, dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. During each episode, I'll be speaking with experienced and respected scientists and mystics. From astrologers to astronomers, from medical doctors to shaman, the scientific method to dowsing and intuition, we'll weave together information from seemingly divergent practices to promote unity and enlightenment. Join me, Gwilda Wiyaka, and the Science of Magic right here on the Mutual Broadcast Network. For more information, visit www.thescienceofmagic.net. Gibbs A. Williams, Ph.D., is a practicing psychoanalyst, supervisor, researcher, and author in New York City. Much of his life has been dedicated to understanding nature and the uses of meaningful coincidences or synchronicities. His radical and original non-Jungian, non-mystical, non-magical theory of synchronicities illuminates much of the fog surrounding this challenging and perplexing topic. His ideas and manners are fresh, presented in a style that is both entertaining and highly informative. He is also an expert on crisis intervention, specially focused on violence reduction for the police and citizens, mastering anxiety, frustration, and stress without the use of medication, and effectively preventing and treating heroin addiction. Dr. Williams can be contacted at his email address at gwwilliamsny11 at aol.com or visit his website at... Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7, 365. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. Sharon Lynn Wyeth, and you're listening to Know the Name, Know the Genius in You. Our guest tonight is Linda Sherman, and her website is soothsayer.com. I noticed on your website, uh, Linda, you speak of nuclear fusion being a possible answer to our energy problems with gas and fracking. Would you elaborate that on uh, for us? I'm so glad, Sharon, that you brought this up because this is one of the things that that is for me personally that I resonate to because the solution 
the global climate change, which is, is really escalating at a rate that scientists had never even envisioned, the melting of the Arctic, the melting of the glaciers on the mountains all over the world, which have provided fresh water for places like China and India and the western United States, et cetera, et cetera. This is a monumental, enormous problem due primarily, although not totally, to greenhouse gas. 